Hey, welcome to Cow Free Kicks. On this channel, I review leather free sneakers only, and today it is the Nike Air Max 95 SE Obsidian or the Plant Cork Pack. Welcome to the channel. If you've not seen one of my reviews before, I always look into five different categories when I review a pair of sneakers. At the end of the video, I'll then give them an overall rating out of five stars. If you do like what you see as you're going along, please do not forget to click the little thumbs up like button below on your device. And whilst you're down there, if you haven't subscribed and you want to show your support, please click the little subscribe button and the little bell that pops up next to it. And you get a fresh notification every time a review drops on the channel. All right, before I hold you up any longer, let's kick this review off by checking out these Nike Air Max 95 SE plant cork packs on feet. What a great looking pair of shoes. These Nike Air Max 95 SEs do not disappoint in hand or on feet. Always been a fan of the silhouette, but what they've done with the upper of these is incredible. Now, they're also known as the Nike Air Max 95 SE Obsidian because of this dark navy obsidian blue color that takes up the majority of the shoe. And also the Nike Air Max 95 Plant Cork Pack because these are actually part of a wider release pack by Nike as part of their Move to Zero initiative. Because of that, there's also, as well as these Nike Air Max 95s, the Nike Air Max 90s, the Nike Blazers, and the Nike Daybreaks. I think that's the four at the moment. There may be more due to be released. They're part of the Move to Zero campaign, and for that reason, Nike have made these from recycled materials partially, and also used plant dyes to dye some of the materials used on the sneakers. With this pair, with the Nike Air Max 95s, what you're getting is recycled denim that runs in the toe box area here in this dark navy obsidian color with this really nice bronze stitching detail in. The denim runs around the bottom two waves of the shoe and then forms the heel cup at the back there with some more Nike Air detailing that's been embroidered in. The next layer that runs on these waves throughout the middle of the shoe is a recycled canvas layer and you've got really nice swoosh detailing embroidered and the back in light brown. One of my favorite elements of the sneaker then is the next part of the overlay which is this wave of partially recycled cork. Now the cork is partially recycled and the remainder of the cork that isn't recycled has been sustainably sourced. You've then got some mesh detail detailing that makes up the top of the sneaker, moves towards the toe box area as well. You've got some round eye stays just here sewn into that mesh detailing. You've got some round laces with some more canvas detailing that runs through the tongue. The tongue for me is really, really nice. You've got this really detailed embroidery on the tongue and it says figure five cork. That is the cork plant that this shoe is based on. Each one of the releases is based on a shoe that Nike love. On the insole for this, you've got this really bright vault colorway. As you move around to the back of the shoe, again, you've got this little bit of Nike Air detailing, and then you've got this massive, chunky Nike Air Max midsole with the visible air windows, the huge one in the heel with the actual back window as well. Then you've got some more smaller windows as you move towards the forefoot. The sole of the sneaker is partially recycled rubber and it's got this really nice grain detailing going on with this dark gum. Massive fan of this shoe. Next, I wanna try them out on feet again to see how comfortable they are on my back door step. Comfort-wise, I haven't had a pair of Air Max 95s on my feet for years, and they did feel really nice underfoot. Now, the step test doesn't really do them justice. It didn't really show that much give, bounce back, or responsiveness when I was putting a lot of pressure on these air units. But underfoot, it does feel surprisingly comfortable and bouncy, especially in the heel area where you have got this huge air bubble. It doesn't 
feel like it's pushing your foot forward too much, but I do find with Nike Air Max, when they do have a larger heel bubble, it can push your foot forward a little bit further into the shoe. Now, the comfort underfoot for the rest of it was nice, but not as responsive as the heel, and especially tapered off where you've just got this foam towards the toes. But overall, really nice feel underfoot. On top of your foot, these do come up a little bit snug. There's a lot of overlays on the top of the shoe and there's foam detailing around the heel cup. The tongue is quite padded and also there's more padding around the toe box area as well. Lengthwise, they're absolutely perfect for me, but they did feel a bit squishy and snug around the midfoot. So if you don't like that, I would go half a size up, but don't forget lengthwise, I didn't have an issue with them at all. Now I wanna move on to their weight where I'm gonna pop them on the scales and show you how much they weigh. Just looking at these sneakers, you can tell they're gonna weigh a lot. As soon as you get them out of the box as well and you've got them in hand, they are on the heavy side. Obviously, 462 grams is one of the heaviest sneakers I'll probably review all year. That means you're lugging around almost a kilogram of weight on your feet. Now, with weight, it's always a trade-off. If I was gonna wear these for athletic purposes, I definitely would not buy them because 462 grams is way too heavy. These are a lifestyle sneaker. You aren't gonna be running in these. You're gonna be wearing these out and about, hopefully not for too long a period, but just keep in mind that they do weigh a lot. So they are gonna weigh your feet down when you're walking around in them. Next, I wanna move on to their breathability where I'm gonna pump the sneakers full of smoke to see how breathable they are. As well as being very heavy, these, these sneakers are possibly the least breathable shoes I have ever reviewed. There's overlay after overlay after overlay after overlay on top of this shoe. Then you've got the foam underneath that, and then you've got the fact that they're so compact and tight that the smoke just could not escape in the smoke test. It really struggled even to get out of the top of the shoe. It just couldn't get out anywhere. Now, that's a clear sign that your feet are gonna get very hot and sweaty in these. These for me are a winter shoe. I don't know why they've been released kind of spring summertime, maybe because they're plant-based, but for that reason, I just don't think I would go about buying these at this time of year, just because if I'm gonna wear these in any humidity at all, my feet are gonna get very, very hot. Now I wanna move on to their price. Now these cost me 160 pounds. Do I have an issue with that price? Yes, I do, because the Nike Air Max 90s come in at 125 pounds. I think the Daybreaks are even under 100 pounds. 160, you know, it's kind of a standard 95 price, but for me, I think the 95s are an overpriced shoe for what you're getting. And that's gonna bring me on to my overall score for these shoes. Now, I really struggle to rate these because I love the way that they look so much, but I can't give these any more than three stars. And that's purely because I think they're overpriced. They are on the heavy side. Yes, they're a lifestyle shoe, but they are still heavy. And also they offer no breathability for your feet at all. So three stars is the best I can do, unfortunately, for a shoe that I absolutely love the way it looks. Now, if you agree or disagree, do not forget to leave a comment below. You can also follow me on Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you again soon for another one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.